Hello, I'm Miss Ginsburg with No Adam, and today we're going to be reading Organisms and Their Environment. This is a student reader in Unit 5. Sensing the Environment. Ses sensing taste in water. The catfish is a common fish found all over the world. It gets its name because it has long structures that stick out around its mouth, similar to a cat's whiskers. The catfish's whisker-like structures are called barbels, and they have an important role. They help the catfish sense its environment. A sense is how animals get information about the outside world. Senses include sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. Animals have different structures called receptors that allow them to sense different kinds of information. For example, catfish have been called swimming tongues because they have more taste buds than any other animal. They have taste buds all over their body, including on their barbels. Taste buds detect molecules from food or other substances. Having so many taste buds allows catfish to taste when food is close by. In contrast, people just have taste buds on the tongue, the roof of the mouth, and near the throat. Catfish have the best sense of taste of all animals. Senses gather information. Every animal has a variety of senses and sense receptors to help it survive in its environment. For example, humans have different senses, including hearing, sight, smell, taste, and touch. Humans have different receptors for each sense. In addition to taste buds for tasting, we have ears for hearing. When an object makes a noise, it sends vibrations through the air. There are many different kinds of sounds, but all sounds make vibrations. These vibrations move through the different parts of your ear. Our skin is the largest part of the body that picks up signals from the environment. Skin is very sensitive. It can feel touch, pressure, and temperature. We all have receptors in our skin that respond to different kinds of touch. We use our eyes for sight. Humans have two eyes. We need light to see because the light bounces off different objects and into our eyes. Taste buds sense molecules from food or other substances. Skin can feel touch, pressure, and temperature. Animals have different senses. Not all animals use their senses in the same way. An animal's senses depends on its environment. For example, catfish have such a strong sense of smell that they don't need to, to see to find food. This is useful in the dark, murky waters where catfish hunt. Similarly, the mealworms are a kind of insect that makes sense of their environment primarily through a sense of touch. They use their legs and antennae to touch their surroundings. A mealworm's antennae are found on its head. The head is also where the mealworm's mouth is. They use their mouths to eat. Mealworms also have eyes on their head, but their sight is very different from humans. Their eyes can sense changes in the brightness of light, but cannot give a clear picture of the environment. Unlike humans, mealworms do not have ears so they cannot hear sound. The mealworm's legs are found on its thorax. The thorax is the middle segment. Like all insects, the mealworm has six legs. The abdomen is the back segment where the stomach is. It digests food and stores fat. A mealworm's anatomy. Head, thorax, where the legs are, and abdomen. Body segment, spine. Senses affect behavior. Senses play an important role in an animal's ability to survive because they affect an organism's behavior. A behavior is an organism's response to a stimulus. A stimulus is anything in the environment that causes an organism to react. 
The way an animal processes information from the environment and then acts on it can be understood by thinking about the senses as part of a system. Remember that a system is a set of connected, interacting parts that form a more complex whole. Systems have inputs and outputs. Inputs are what are received by the system. The information gathered from a sense is an input. For example, mealworms use their legs and antennae to gather inputs of information about the feel of the environment. They use their eyes to sense the brightness of the environment. Mealworms use their sense structures to gather information about the environment. Here's the mealworm's eye, antennae, mouth, claw. Once an animal's senses have gathered information from the environment, the senses then pass that information to the brain. The brain is the part of the body that interprets all of the information the senses receive. It is often found in an animal's head. The brain interprets the information so the animal can make sense of the environment at that moment. The information can also be stored as memories. Outputs are what are sent from the system. The behavior that results from the brain's interpretations of the information is the output. When a mealworm senses that food is nearby, it moves toward the food. If it senses bright light, it moves away from it. These movements are outputs. The human brain collects information from all the senses. Vision, smell, taste, hearing, touch. Stimuli from the environment are inputs and behaviors are outputs. Stimulus, sensory input, brain interprets information, memory, behavior output. Kinds of behavior. Animals respond to the information processed by the brain in different ways. Behaviors can be learned or innate. A learned behavior is a change in behavior based on experience. In other words, it has to be taught. Innate behaviors are those behaviors that an organism is born knowing how to do. There are two kinds of innate behaviors, reflexive and instinctive. A reflexive behavior is an involuntary, immediate response to a stimulus. Jumping when you hear a loud noise is an example of a reflexive behavior. An instinctive behavior is a more complex response to a stimulus. Instinctive behaviors often relate to those necessary for an organism's survival, such as finding food, caring for young, and avoiding predators. For example, birds build nests instinctively. They do not have to be taught how to do this. Mealworms instinctively use their senses to seek out food and dark, damp areas that protect them from predators. They do not have to learn these behaviors. Nest building is an instinctive behavior. Using senses to survive. The mealworm's behaviors of finding food and avoiding predators are essential to the mealworm's survival. Without them, mealworms would not be able to complete their life cycle. The mealworm's life cycle has four stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Mealworms are the larva stage of the darkling beetle. A larva is a young form of an adult insect. The mealworm uses its senses to avoid predators and eat as much food as it can. It needs enough food to get it through the next stage called a pupa because the mealworm pupa does not move or eat. All of the pupa's energy is used to change its body from a mealworm into an adult darkling beetle. A mealworm life cycle. Egg, larva, pupa, adult, and the adult lays the eggs. Adapting to the environment, hummingbirds in flight. Have you ever seen a hummingbird in flight? 
They look like acrobats flying through the air. Hummingbirds are the only birds that can fly both forward and backwards. They can also hover in midair, fly sideways, and even upside down. This is a trait that helps hummingbirds survive in their environment. A trait is a physical or behavioral characteristic of an organism. Hummingbirds hover as they eat the nectar of different flowers. Nectar is a sweet, sugary liquid that plants make. It gives the hummingbirds the energy they need to fly. The way that hummingbirds hover to eat is an example of a behavioral trait. Some traits are adaptations. Hummingbirds are some of the smallest birds in the world. Many of their traits give them a survival advantage in their environment. For example, hummingbirds have beaks that are long and thin. These beaks help them dip into the flowers to sip nectar. Hummingbirds also have a tongue that has two grooves. The two grooves work as a tiny pump. They pull nectar from the flower into the hummingbird's mouth. These physical traits are all examples of adaptations. An adaptation is any trait that helps an organism survive in its environment. Adaptations develop across generations in response to the environment. For example, there are different kinds of hummingbirds. Each kind of hummingbird has a beak that has a different shape from other kinds of hummingbirds. Each shape allows the bird to drink from a specific kind of flower. Hummingbirds have different beaks because of the kind of flower they eat. Traits and heredity. How do organisms get traits in the first place? When parents reproduce, they pass along traits to their offspring. This passing on of traits from parents to children is called heredity. Heredity causes offspring to have traits that are similar to their parents and to their siblings. There are patterns that occur as traits get passed along. Heredity explains why offspring look similar to their parents. This is because they inherited the traits from their parents. To inherit means to receive a trait from parents or ancestors. Heredity explains why baby hummingbirds have long, thin beaks, just like their parents. It also explains why baby giraffes have long necks, just like their parents. Both of these are inherited traits. Long, thin beaks are an inherited trait. A long neck is an inherited trait. Variation in traits. However, Offspring don't look or act exactly like their parents. There are some differences. These differences are called variations. An example, one baby giraffe might have a neck that is a little shorter than its parents or siblings, or its spots might have a slightly different color pattern than its parents or siblings. The environment can also influence traits. For example, plants that don't get enough water won't grow as tall their leaves won't develop as fully. Over time, they will turn brown and die. Similarly, a pet dog that is given too much food to eat will become overweight. The amount of food an organism eats is environmental. It affects traits such as size. Sometimes variations in traits make it easier to survive, find a mate, and reproduce. For example, Two different kinds of tortoises live on the Galapagos Islands. These islands are off the western coast of South America. On one island, the tortoises have shells that rise in the front, like a saddle. This makes it easier for them to lift their necks to reach taller cacti. Tortoises from the other island have dome-shaped shells. The vegetation is lower to the ground, so they don't need to lift their heads as high. Tortoises with saddle-shaped shells on the island with higher cacti benefits, um, on the island with higher cacti benefited because they could reach the plants. They survived and passed along the saddle shape to their offspring. This is called natural selection. Natural selection is the theory that organisms well fitted to their environments will have offspring and pass on useful adaptations. Those organisms that cannot adapt to their environment don't reproduce and die out over time. 
This is a picture of a saddleback Galapagos tortoise and a domed Galapagos tortoise. Bird beaks and natural selection. An English scientist named Charles Darwin was one of the first to come up with the theory of natural selection. As a young man, Darwin set off on a worldwide journey on a ship named the HMS Beagle. His job on the ship was to make observations and collect samples of animals and plants from different places. Darwin was most curious about what traits animals in different locations have and don't have in common. He was the first to notice the difference in tortoise shells. He was also very interested in a group of finches that lived on the Galapagos Islands. Finches are a kind of bird. He observed that there were about a dozen different finch species living on the island, and that each species had a slightly different beak. He realized that the size and shape of the beaks were directly related to the food source of each kind of finch. This is important. Although one adaptation might be useful for one kind of bird in a specific environment, that same trait might not be useful for another species in a different environment. Darwin's sketches of finch beaks. Well, I learned a lot reading organisms and their environment. I hope you learned a lot too. I'll see you tomorrow with another one. Bye.